All right, how you doing? It's Joe Youngblood here with Nate Heckenberger and Mark Houseel. We're going to do a little recap of what we all witnessed today, and we're going to preview what we're going to see and uh, hopefully see tomorrow. So, you know, Nate, you were, you know, around watching all the matches tonight. We were kind of locked in on this mat when we only saw Penridge in downtown and in uh, downtown east and Kettering Rock South. You know, give us a little bit of what you saw elsewhere in the gym tonight that we didn't get to see. Uh, well, obviously the highlight of the night, I think kind of the whole gym kind of turned to, to this mat when, when Tramp and Cummings went at it. That was kind of the highlight of the night, I think. It was kind of cool to see, even though there was a match behind us, you know, everybody in the uh, stands turned to watch that one. But, um, you know, I was kind of surprised. Uh, it was good to see Penridge ra wrestle back and beat O&J. I wasn't sure they would do that. And obviously Boyertown is just a buzzsaw at this point. Um, but, you know, them and Council Rock tomorrow, as it's always a good recipe for entertaining wrestling. Yeah. So before I turn over to Mark for for a question too, what were your thoughts? Did you see any of the O and J Rock South match? Uh, a little bit, yeah. So, you know, O and J banged up, and uh, I talked to the raffle afterwards, and and uh, you know he said we we put all our chips on the t chips on the t middle of the table and went after it. Uh, you know, unbelievably close to pulling the upset. You know, they 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 roll out a an, you know Xavier Frizzy is not 100% 95 195 he loses one nothing to Joe Doyle, and you know they have a a, a locking hands call on Mancini that that is the match turner against Radner, so you know they 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 lost by point at 160 I believe so they're right in it. Um, you know, and you're paying a full strength O and J team. Are they are they still in the mix right now? I think so. I mean, they, you know, they wrestle as good of a schedule as anybody in the Pac-10. You know, they're at all the big tournaments. They're always battle tested. That staff always gets those kids to, you know, kind of step up when the when the lights are the brightest. Um, and Council Rock South, it worked out. You know, the way it started, where, you know, they had all their horses at the end to kind of take them home. But you know, I think O and J surprised a lot of people with the way they hung with them and you know, put it down, you know, came down to the, the last couple of matches. So yeah. it, was a, it was a good effort for them. Yeah. So let's get a little Boyertown talk here. Um, unfortunately, we were facing Ford when the match behind us was uh, Tommy Killeran and uh, Augustine from Upper Derby. Heard the crowd scream in the first period, and then I heard, you know, the crowd, Boyertown crowd go nuts. I didn't get a chance to catch the match. Were you able to kind of give us a little insight on that match and how yeah. things played out? So Augustine got the, uh, he got the first takedown pretty quick, actually. Um, and then, you know, Killeran eventually uh, took him to his back, almost pinned him in the first period, I think it was. Uh, you know, and then the second period, he got him to his back, and he finally finished it. But, you know, Augustine got up early, and Killeran, you know, had the experience to, to not panic and, you know, finish the job. So, to follow up, I mean, tomorrow, we're Town Rock South. It's, you know, we I was talking, as you know, I said earlier in, in, in the earlier match, uh, I got a chance to talk with Coach Cooley and, and, and Haley. And you know they're they're nervous because it's it could go one way or another. It's it's a matter of bonus points. You know you got guys like Wood, Harvey, Killer, and you know if they don't get sixes, you know this, they could they could, Rock can get in here and sneak one out. Yeah, I mean I, it's always fun to watch Council Rock South. I think their staff is you know might be one of the best in the state at just getting their kids prepared and getting them up and and ready for any kind of battle. Uh, I remember even last year, you know Boyertown was a pretty heavy favorite, and Council Rock South had them on the ropes for a while. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of the same tomorrow. Um, you know, they got some, Council Rock's got some studs. I think Boyertown may be a little bit more solid from top to bottom. Uh, they don't really have any holes. Um, so that might be the difference there. But uh, there should be some great individual matchups. And, you know, I think it'll be, I think it'll be fun to watch. I think we need to give credit where credit's due. Not only can the Rock South coaches prepare their kids, get them ready to wrestle, they're also pretty good dressed staff, too. You That's know, they, sure. they, they, they put it on, and, you know, we've talked about it this year, and, you know, we really, when we did the Unity Cup uh, for the um, Rock North, Rock South, it really came about, and, uh, you know, they don't call Vivacqua the the, uh, the godfather and uh, Brad the Don for nothing. You know, they don't disappoint, you know, but, um, you know, on a serious note, a lot of coaches say they have it 7-7, seven, seven, uh, myself included, and, uh, you know, I went, you know, not... I'm not perfect. I went three for four in the in the in the uh, in the cores. I had uh, Rustin being Upper Darby. I just thought, I felt that it was a better matchup for Rustin, and it came down to the end. It, they were up, uh, Rust, or, uh, Rustin was up 30-29 going into 152, and then the got the fall. So, um, with the wrestlebacks, and let, let's change gears. You know, we you know, change gears to that. We have in the Conci semis tomorrow. Um. 
Downtown East. Or I'm sorry, Conti Quarters. Right? No, Conti no, Semis. Semis. Sorry. Yep. We have Downtown East versus Penridge. Well, well, downtown East against Ruston. Yeah, Ruston. Yeah, Rustin, yeah. Rustin, yeah. Rustin. yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, so uh, I mean, at all Chesmond battle, they haven't seen each other. They were both at the the Garnet Valley duels this year, but they didn't they didn't end up facing each other. So uh, I think Downingtown East has the upper hand, but um, you yeah, know, Ruston's a younger team. They're kind of scrappy. They can you know, there's no pressure on them at this point. They're a 12 seed, so nobody expected them to be wrestling for a spot at states anyway. I, I'm uh, not gonna lie, I, I, I I'm honestly kind of did. I felt they were underseeded from the start. Yeah. You know, they had they they you know they faltered against Garnet Valley when they probably should have beaten them. That really probably in the eyes of the steering committee and the seating team really knocked them down and, and when they beat North Penn again we covered that match I saw it firsthand it wasn't a shocker to me like we covered Ra, uh, Rustin when they wrestled East and I felt they controlled that match and like you said scrappy is a great word because I, that's what I felt was going to carry them against Upper Darby. Upper Darby is a very scrappy team mm -hmm. very athletic and, and sprinkled with some great wrestlers I felt that their scrappiness and, and Rustin's ability to have a few more guys that were great wrestlers was the difference and you know it just came down to you know bonus points at the end Livingston that pin and you know we didn't get to see it and I'll look at the box score later and you know maybe see where it went wrong but um and on the other side you know you have uh the other Concy semifinal is Upper Darby and Penn Ridge that's mm -hmm. that's gonna be a barn burner there you know yeah. Nate you want to give us your thoughts on it and you know Mark and I'll maybe weigh in a little bit after yeah I mean one. I just, uh, like I said before, you know, the way O&J wrestled that first match against Council Rock, I thought that they would, you know, have enough in the tank to, to beat Penridge. But, you know, give Penridge credit. They had a, a tough loss against Downingtown East, and they found enough, you know, to come back and rally and, and beat O&J. And, you know, they're, they're, they're as battle-tested as anyone in this tournament. Obviously, they're, you know, they're without their 170-pounder, and they got a new 120 in there. So, um, but, you know, Upper Darby, this is new territory for them. I think they're going to be... I'm not gonna say they're not gonna be prepared for it, but I think Penridge is a little bit ready, more ready in this kind of uh, you know atmosphere to to take it home and get you know maybe a rematch against Downingtown East. You know, I, I think I have to agree. I, I don't know, like you said, how they can prepare this. The staff at Upper Darby can prepare them for the for the big lights. Like you know, they're wrestling to go to state duels, and that's a it's not an easy thing to do. And you know, they coming off the loss they just took on the map behind us. I, I was the final score 66 to three or 66 to nine or something, something bad. A border town rolled them, and which they've done a lot of teams. So, mm -hmm. you know, I guess we'll have to see what happens. And you know, Mark made the comment earlier: cream always rises to the top. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see. I, I would love to see a, a Downingtown East and Penridge rematch. I mean, we won't get to see it because we'll be covering the final. Mm -hmm. But you know, that would, that could have uh, interesting effects with the moves that Penridge made early on. That maybe we felt maybe ultimately led to their demise. Yeah. You know, they're, they're making the bump, but again, like you said, not having their 70 pounder, they have to do something, and we felt that was it. And still didn't get bonus points, and you know, definitely frustrated. And and uh, Horn wrestled them tough, and yeah. So those I, two kids, Stromer and uh, Burz, is keeping Parker and and Rush, Rush to yeah. to majors, and you know Zimmerman and Cummings got his got pins when they needed it. So that's those those four matches were the, the difference. New bomb, you know? not, not not going over, not getting pinned, even though exactly. he's going to oh, time in a bar or a half on his back. <laughs> man, you know, kid yeah. didn't have any. Didn't, Might didn't be a little stiff up. tomorrow, but yeah, you know, hopefully he's able to strap it up yeah. and go. Wade Cummings actually, that was his 99th career pin. So tomorrow he might be going for 100 pins. I don't know how many people have done that in District One, but pretty I, big stat. I want to say when we talked to him earlier in the year, he want to say he was he would be the first in Chester County to have 100 mm -hmm. pins. Yep. So. You know, you know, maybe he gets it tomorrow. I don't. They didn't really have anyone to to throw out there. I mean, he pinned Whiting once, mm -hmm. and I say he'll probably do it again if he wrestles him. Um, you know, because you know, he'll go out to do his job just like before. But Mark, you got anything left to add? I mean, consolation with Upper Darby and and Penridge. You know, Penridge, they left a lot of points out when he wrestled down in town with the bonus points, and, mm -hmm. and I think they realize that. And unfortunately for Upper Darby, I think Penridge. He's gonna get it together tomorrow. I think I I definitely see Penridge and Downtown East in in that final, and, and, and things change. I mean, in a matter of a day, you know, you get a guy like Reinhold who who could only muster up an overtime win. You know, if he turns something over and gets some bonus points here, Penridge has a shot, but it, it's tough. I mean, it, it's really tough. I mean, we we, we yeah, nobody wants to be the four seed coming out of District One. You get no. either. Central Dolphin or uh, Cumberland, Cumberland Valley, Valley so. Right. so. And, and speaking of that, like Reinhold, he's gonna have his hands full. At 95. Kennerly's there. He's ranked two in the region right now. You know, there's there's not a lot of breaks in the upper part of the lineup, but you know, so you know, time of bonus points, you know, where Penridge is strong, 
Upper Derby's eh, not so much. And, you know, Upper Derby's going to scrap. And it's going to be interesting because you're going to have those guys that, that are battle-tested, mm -hmm. that, you know, Nahas and, and Blanchard, guys that, like, you know, kind of get overshadowed. And those are going to be the guys, I think, that will carry Penridge tomorrow to, to win. Yeah, and Upper Derby not having DiFilippo in the lineup, that's, you know, that's, that's a, bit, a bit of a... A downgrade, so. And, and yeah. we talked earlier about like the schedule being battle tested. You know, Penridge's schedule on a season compared to Upper Darby's. I mean, it, it, there's a big difference there. Huge uh, difference. And I, and I think that that eventually shows towards this time of the season. You start seeing guys, you know, they have a great win and record, but you know they go against a seven and fourteen guy, and the seven fourteen guy does his job, maybe even gets a win, you know, over a guy who has twenty four. He's twenty four and three. And, and it's all down to being battle tested. You know, the, the strength of schedule has a, has a really big impact this time of the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Penridge is kind of used to those two day, you know, grinder tournaments. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how many upper derbies had, but um, you know, it's a, it's a new experience to wake up tomorrow and have to go, you know, some some high quality bout, bouts again. So not just that, like you said, the two day weigh-in. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, but Mark, thank you, Nate. Yep. Appreciate it. That's yeah, good, good to be there here. There you have it, guys, folks. We're uh, we're gonna close up here. We back tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, wrap again with uh, with Nate and uh, maybe some other guests. And uh, there you have it. Good night of wrestling. Very impressive night. Some great matches. So, signing off from PAWrestling.com. It's Joe Youngblood. We have Nate Hackenberger and Mark Hausiel. Thank you, and have a great night. <laughs>